Okay, so check it out. I made oat milk for soap. And it's basically, well it is, um, oatmeal. And it was put through a cheese strainer, or a cheesecloth, into the bowl, and then I poured it into here. And it's going to cool down now, and then I'm going to pop it in the fridge, and I'm going to use it later for making soap. So it has all the benefits of oatmeal in it, like all of the, the skin nutrient benefits without any of the scratchy <clears throat> nubules that you get when you put solid stuff in soap, which is strange to me because you're just washing like food solids down the drain. You don't really need to. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. Gonna make some more soap. Okay, so all of my oils are measured, and the oat milk is in there too. I figured I'd try it this way just to um, see what would happen. This batch might not work. It might. It might not. Because um, it's adding more uh, water, like water's in the oat milk, um, than I'd accounted for for the lye. Which is right there, and I mixed it outside. Um, quick note about working with lye. Do not work with lye without... Um, uh, gloves and preferably goggles and if you can work outside please work outside it's got this vapor that happens once it mixes with the water and uh, it'll burn your lungs so uh, don't breathe it in work well ventilated um, so right now we're going to try to get the oils and the lye to the same temperature the lie at this point is 140 degrees, and that'll happen really fast. Um, so when you put the lie in slowly, I'm sorry I didn't show you that part, but I need both my hands, and I can't do it while I'm holding the phone. So um, I guess we'll catch up when the oils are all melted. So these are room temperature. That needs to cool down. We'll meet somewhere in the middle, and then we've got honey here ready. We've got um, our molds ready. I'm using silicone because silicone doesn't stick to anything and that's really nice. I mean otherwise if you have like a, a mold or something like that you need to find some way of either greasing it which I think is gonna mess up something somewhere. It's adding extra oil that you don't want or you'd have to line it with butcher paper and I don't have a wooden mold um, so I don't have to worry about it. I don't know. The silicone is just so much easier. Um, based on my research and there's my stick blender that is for soaping only those are my candy thermometers for soaping only all this stuff is for soaping only and uh, Becky and Jarrett I'm using the honey that you guys gave out as a wedding party gift so yay honey oat and then um, once this is all melted um, or actually while this is melting I should probably go measure my essential oil and you want to use about half an ounce per pound. This is a two pound batch. It's not very big. I mean, really the last batch I did, I got one of the orange guys and a Lego. <laughs> and the Lego one ended up getting like most of, I, I guess my essential oil wasn't exactly mixed in all the way with the other oils that were saponifying. So it's a little greasier than the others. And again, it's not done curing. You guys, the uh, oil now that it's melted, I also should have known that this was going to happen. I kind of guessed it would. Um, the oat milk is water-based. And of course, it's floating around in the oil now, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, once we hit it with the stick blender and the lye is in there and everything like that, um, then it, it really won't matter. It'll start to saponify the, the oils. And saponification is just the, the chemical change that happens between the oil and the lye. So the oil ceases to exist and the lye ceases to exist and then what you have is glycerin and soap. Um, pretty nifty. Um, so this is what it looks like. I'm also not going to show you guys when I put the lye in because again I need two hands for that. I need to constantly be stirring it like this and trying not to hit the spoon, spatula thing, wearing gloves obviously. Um, and so pouring it in very, very, very slowly, and then you'll see it'll get cloudy murky, like not all these little bubbles of 
water-based oat milk, but actually cloudy. And that's the, the chemical reaction starting to happen that's making the soap. After I put the lye into the oils, what I meant by cloudy, it's not clear anymore. You can't see the reflection off the bottom of the pot. It kind of looks like um, apple cider. Um, and it'll continue to look like that for a while because I'm trying to be temperature savvy about this one. I'm going to stir this for a while and then once it hits the temperature that I want I'm going to use the stick blender and uh, hopefully bring it to trace pretty quickly so that I can add my essential oil without the essential oil flashing off. Because all the essential oils they have um, a, a point of temperature at which they they just kind of burn off. They don't become, or they don't they don't exist anymore, I guess is a good way to put it. Sort of like uh, those Glade plugins, those use fragrance oils, not essential oils, but it's the same idea. It heats it up and then it disperses and it's not in what you want it to be anymore. So I want this soap to smell like something. So I gotta wait for it to cool down a little bit. All right, uh, we added our honey. Um, we haven't added our essential oil yet. It's not come to trace yet. Um, it's still a little bit warm. Um, and this really isn't doing it justice. It's, in truth, this really pumpkin-y orange color. And I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> it might have something to do with the honey. The, the sugars in the honey might be cooking, and this might actually end up being a, a dark bar of soap, which is kind of cool, because... Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about putting color into the soap yet, so getting some variety is kind of nice <laughs> when it happens. Um, so the next time that I turn this on, it, uh, well, I'll show you Trace, and then I'll show you um, when I pour the soap, well, after I've poured the soap and I'm about to wrap it up. Is, well, you can tell when Trace is when it leaves its marks on the surface. Yay! Smiley face. Yee. Happy soap. Okay, um, so I just added the lavender essential oil um, and I'm mixing in that oil and I don't think that's an oil that's going to saponify, it's just for smell. Um, and yeah, so in a minute I'm going to pour this into the molds. Do, do, do. And um, then we're going to wrap it up with a blanket because it's, it's going to need to stay warm um, so it can continue to saponify. And then we have to leave it alone for 24 to 48 hours. That's the hardest part, is the waiting. I hate waiting. Um, and then we get to cut it. So I'll show you it in the loaf before I wrap it up. And then um, I'll also show you on soap cutting day. Yay! Um, just what it looks like. It, it's probably not going to look any different than any of the other uh, natural soaps. Um, they're, you know, no color. In, this doesn't look like it's really getting any darker. I kind of half-heartedly hoped it was going to turn like this really dark brown because of the sugar and the honey. But, I don't know, you never know. Here we are. There's the loaf, and there's the little Lego guy. Little remnants of. Um, oh yeah, I also forgot to tell you completely what oils I put in this. So, um, I put in olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, um, food grade coconut oil, lanolin, and castor oil. And, yeah, that and the lye and the water, and that's you know, a little time and some heat and some thermometers and some essential oils later. Um, we have the beginnings of soap. Soap baby. Enjoyed watching this and I'll post some more of you do.